My name is Ryan Jones. I am a second year PhD student in mechanical engineering. Now if you're like I was, the first time I heard the term granular materials, you might be wondering, what's this guy talking about? Luckily I'm here to let you know. What I mean when I say granular materials is any large system made up of individual particles. And typically what I'm talking about is systems that we can see with, with the naked eye. So I'm not really talking about the nanoscale particles that some of my colleagues work with. But it can range in size. So I might be talking about sand at the beach, or maybe I'm talking about the breakfast cereal that we might be having tomorrow morning for breakfast. But I could also be talking about meteors that are in space that some of my colleagues look past as they're looking to study distant star systems. One of the things about all these systems that I've talked about so far is that their particles are irregular. And what I mean by that is that the particles can be different sizes, they can be different shapes, and they can be different densities. Scientifically, that can be very hard for us to study. And so often what we do is we simplify things. So as you see in this statue, all the particles there are round, they're spheres, and that's a little bit easier for us to work with. So that's how we, that's how we do a lot of our studying. So one of the, another very interesting thing about granular materials that I enjoy is that it's a little bit undecided in how it wants to behave. Sometimes it'll act like a solid. So when you're wa walking along the sand at the beach, you can walk on top of the sand. It's acting like a solid. But other times it'll act more like a liquid. So like water, it'll flow down a hill. You might see this in a landslide or an avalanche. And like water, if it runs into an obstacle, it'll form a wave coming off that obstacle. It's in these flowing regimes, this times when the granular materials are flowing, that I do most of my research. So I mentioned that my research was based on segregation. And so what I mean by that is the unmixing or the separation of particles as they're flowing. So in this example, we have large blue particles and small red particles. They start initially mixed, but when they're flowing down a hill, they'll separate to where the large blue particles will float to the surface and the small red particles will sink to the bottom. And then at the bottom of the hill, you have two layers of particles where the small particles are sitting underneath the large particles. You might have experienced this yourself. If you've ever opened a can of mixed nuts, you might, might have noticed that the large Brazil nuts are sitting at the surface and the smaller cashews and peanuts tend to be at the bottom of the can. So you might be asking, why do we really care about segregation in granular materials? And often it's because things need to stay mixed. In industry, granular materials is the second most manipulated ingredient. And it's only behind water that that happens. And often, like I said, we really care that things stay well mixed. When we're making medicine, it's very important that, that the, before we form the, the capsules, everything is perfectly mixed. And if they're not mixed well, then after those capsules are fo formed, the medicine company has to throw those away because they can't sell them to us if they're not of equal quality. And then because granular material is so often used in industry, it ends up being involved in over 50% of the world's economy. And that can range in, in fields from agriculture, where we have things like corn or coffee beans, but also into industries like mining, where we're pulling metals out of the earth in order to make our cars and our computers. And so because industry has used these materials for so long, they have some empirical ways of avoiding or minimizing segregation. And oftentimes that's involved in mixing right at the very end of a production process, or it can be in changing the flow rate of how fast these materials are flowing. So there's a few things that we know, but there's also a lot of things we don't know about segregation in granular materials. Some of the things we don't know include how fast does segregation happen. If we look up the, at this top figure here, we have a rotating tumbler, and it starts off initially mixed, but then within one rotation, we see that the large green particles have gone to the outside of the tumbler, and those small red particles have segregated towards the middle of the tumbler. And really that, what that means is, or really that's a result of us not fully understanding the underlying physics that happens during, during segregation. In another tumbler, in this case a square tumbler, when that rotates, we might see these interesting patterns of small dark particles alternating with large white particles and repeating that, alter, that alternating pattern as the tumbler rotates. And really from the industrial standpoint, we want to know if there are there other ways that we can slow down or reduce segregation in granular materials. The way that I approach my research is I do physical experiments and I do computational experiments. For the physical experiments, it's like playing in a giant sandbox where I'm in the lab and I'm doing experiments and I'm taking data and making a mess and it's great fun. 
But then to supplement that, I also do computer simulations, like you see here on your right, where I'm matching the physical experiment, but this allows me to track each individual particle and to try and really learn the physics of what's happening during these segregating events. And some of the specifics that I look at for when I'm doing my research is I'm trying to understand how the flow affects segregation. So how are the particles moving amongst themselves and moving relative to each other? How does that affect segregation? I'm also looking at how do particles interact with their neighbors. So you can imagine that a small particle surrounded by large particles is going to act a little bit differently than a large particle that's surrounded by small particles. And then if you remember at the very beginning, I mentioned that most of the time we simplify these systems to where we're looking at spheres because they're a little bit easier to handle. I'm trying to take a step away from that and look at non-spherical particles. So they're still all the same shape, but now I'm looking at things like rods and cylinders and other shapes, trying to understand how shape affects segregation. So most of my research is really trying to understand the physics of granular materials during segregation events. But that has immediate industrial applications. For example, when you're at the supermarket, you want to make sure that the cereal you buy has the correct amount of cereal to marshmallows so that it's really tasty. But then also it helps industries reduce loss by making sure that they are making safe products, that they are producing what they expect to produce. So the next time you're walking down the beach along Lake Michigan, I think you just might look at sand just a little bit differently. Thank you.